welcome to Hello Country Podcast, the, uh, you know, compendium of things that happen in an audio sense. Uh, everything available on hellocountry.ca comes to life right here on the podcast. I'm Mike, and right there is Papa Country. Hey, buddy. Howdy, Mike. How you doing? I'm not going to complain one little bit. Now, you're in your rocking chair. You are uh, doing what I like to call setting a spell, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm kicking it indoors today. No more truck casting. Yeah. No more cowboy hat today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm home alone with the boys. Mama Country decided she had to head into the city. Actually, she had an appointment. Oh. Uh, so I'm at home with the boys and the dogs. So this could blow up on me at any time, but we're just going to roll with it. <laughs> uh, the last time she left me at home with the dogs <laughs> and the kids, uh, Big Brother drove his dirt bike right into the pond. Come on. So How, yeah, did, that, how yeah. did that go down when she got home? Uh, not well, not well. I actually, yeah, he was screaming for help and I was out there with a little guy, but I thought it was just a bird calling, like a weird, like, yeah. help me daddy kind of bird. Oh, a, a help but me bird. It turned out he was like submerged in the pond. So, um, yeah. yeah, let's hope this goes better, but that's actually a wonderful segue into uh, who our guest is on uh, the Hello Country podcast today. Uh, I like that all hell gross. breaks. Uh, sorry, man. Yeah. I like that all hell breaks loose uh, yeah. when when you're left alone with the uh, with the kids. Uh, it oh. happens in the country. It happens in the suburbs. It happens in the city around the world. Mom comes home. There's always been some calamity that needs unscrambled. You know. Oh, absolutely. Like uh, the kids, they've been barely fed. I think they've had suckers today. Uh, which, <laughs> it counts. That counts as a meal. It's a food group. Okay, sorry. You, you, now, you said that the, 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 your little guy ended up uh, headed toward the pond on a dirt bike, which means that uh, this is something that's become part of your life. And, of course, I cut you off, but we have a great guest. He's on the line with us now. Let's, uh, yeah. let's talk about him. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Davin Gross is on the podcast. Davin owns Moto Mech, which is the, uh, the mech shop located on site at Moto Park Training Facility in Chatsworth, which has uh, become our second home lately. So growing up in the city and in the suburbs, uh, I never thought I'd have a dirt bike in the back of my pickup truck because uh, I never had a pickup truck or dirt bike growing up. Uh, and it was never really um, one of those things that I aspired to, to have. But I love it. I love getting into this uh, the dirt bike community. It's wonderful, and the folks over at Moto Mac and and Moto Park are, are they're just wonderful uh, people to to work with and to get to know. So really happy to have Davin on the podcast. Welcome, Davin. Thanks for having me, Papa Country. <laughs> hey, no problem. See, the whole Papa Country thing rolls off your tongue pretty well. I mean, he does it really well. well. You seem very comfortable <laughs> calling me Papa, which I, I do appreciate because I know it's a bit of an issue for Mike at I, times. You know what? It, it's not that it's an issue for me, but I, I'm curious now. How do you like being called Papa Country, Papa Country? I, I quite enjoy it. Okay, well, that's good for me yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. When it comes from you guys, it, it feels good. You know what? Yeah, listen, Papa Country, if you wanted to be called uh, Roger Rabbit, I'd go with yeah. that, okay? Yeah, uh, I like that too. <laughs> I like that. So you take your pick. Either or. Either or. You guys pick, okay? Well, thanks um, Thanks for joining us, Davin. Uh, this this is for real. It's a big deal in uh, Papa Country's life. The whole family there has uh, uh, adopted it. And, uh, and of course, um, you know, we got talking about this off, off air on the show here, but this is a really awesome solution to keep your kids active right now when everything else is canceled yeah i think it's fantastic um it was i met uh papa country oh i don't know five six weeks ago and he's been a regular uh customer at the shop and um at the park and it's awesome to have the family out they come out and ride uh i think every week yeah um yeah we're there every like, friday and then some yeah <laughs> There's the boys now. Oh, there they are. Yeah, yeah. See, I told you things are going to blow up. Hey, guys. So the little guy banged his head. He's crying, but we got him. All and right. Is good. everything cool, buddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> uh, well, Davin, let me uh, let me ask you a couple of things. Uh, when it, just, just get a little bit of history. How did you end up in the uh, motorsport business to start with? Uh, I grew up I grew up on a farm uh, my whole life. And uh, when I was about 12 years old, got a dirt bike and started riding. Um had a great passion for it, working on it and uh, riding them and raced, raced all the way up and growing up. And that was my ticket to stay in the sport was to start a shop. And I'm a mechanic full time now and get to live right at the track and work on bikes and uh, stay involved in the sport all the time. 
Talk about it as a sport to me, because it sounds like you started as a youngster and you stayed competitive with it uh, right up to the point where you are now. Uh, what's that experience yeah, like? For- this, uh, it's fantastic. I think um, it's a great sport for uh, it's an it's an individual sport as who's on the bike, but uh, it's a whole family behind you and a whole you know group of friends um, to get you where you want to be. Um, I raced from the time I was. 16 i still race now i'm 26 even this weekend i went to ottawa and uh raced the premix national what um wow you're like a yeah, professional so, rider well <laughs> not not necessarily i did it's like uh i just do it for fun now but uh wow. a lot of my friends are professional riders for sure guys i raced with growing up are that's what they do now for a living you know it's interesting when you're hanging around a track uh for me it was uh uh, go-karting, soapboxing, and, and stock car racing. But there is um, a camaraderie that takes place and friendships that are made when you are going from place to place and track to track with the same parents showing up and everybody's kind of, you know, the competition has to go on that day. If something's wrong on your bike, likely uh, John's dad over here has a part that he's going to lend you. Or It seems like the whole community gets in on it to make it happen, which feels great for the kids. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, just seeing a family as a kid gets older, usually they're off doing their own thing. But in the motocross community, uh, even when they're 16, 18 years old, the, the whole family's coming to the track and still riding. And that's really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool bonding thing. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, about uh, Motor Park there in Chatsworth. Uh, what do people uh, when you show up there, what do you find? Um, there's a full on, uh, motocross facility there. We've got, uh, a main track, mini track shop, uh, camping facilities, a restaurant. Um, there's even hotel rooms, rental bikes. Um, so we kind of offer the whole package there, um, for entry level riders to professional riders to come and enjoy the weekend or the day riding. Uh, why am I freaking out so bad that those little angels that we just saw on the screen there are getting onto a uh, a motorbike? Let's talk about that. Is, oh, is, let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff involved in thinking about this as a parent, I would imagine. Right, Papa Country? Absolutely. I think the key is to have a really patient, understanding wife. Um, which is probably the key to life in general. I just, I just told you. She's never coming life. back, is she? <laughs> I have an appointment. I'll see you later. <laughs> but, but uh, no, I mean, a lot of times parents will say no. They're, they're, they're scared for whatever reason by putting their little kid on a motorized vehicle, and I get it. But Big Brother has really taken to this like a duck to water. He is out there riding longer than any other kid I see. We get there at about uh, 1230 as a lesson from one to two, and we don't leave till six o'clock sometimes. Wow. They've even let him on the big track. So he rides on the little track, and then at five o'clock, they clear the big track of all the, the big guys and the big bikes, fast guys like Davin, and let all the little guys go on. And he's out there, he's seven years old, and he's just, he's just giving her. So we're super proud of him. And the little guy who just turned two, has one of these uh, Strider bikes, no pedals, no training wheels, and he <laughs> he revs the handlebar like mm-hmm. it's a throttle. It makes a vroom vroom noise, and he's been saying dirt bike for a long time. So we bought him a little PW50, which ironically is sitting in Davin's shop right now because it needed a bit of work, unfortunately, when we bought it, but happy to have it in Davin's shop. Um, but So he's getting all set up now to ride, which that to me is crazy, a two-year-old on a dirt bike, but yeah. it happened. Yeah, and uh, and Mama Country's totally cool with it. She's super supportive. She's the type of woman who, if you fall going over a jump on your bike, the day is not over. You got to get back up on your bike and you got to go over that jump again. That's get back that's on the horse. Philosophy. Exactly, get back on the horse, which is something else we do here on the Hello Country Farm. Well, there's very little of that left in uh, youth existence these days, where things are challenging. Here's what I noticed. For, first of all. A lot goes into keeping your kids safe on these bikes uh, that, you know, in any other scenario and in many other sports, they can become uh, way more injured. Uh, the track is set up that way. You know, they're they're organized by age group and ability and all that sort of stuff, I would imagine. But what I think I like the most about it is the concentration aspect, Davin. These kids have to focus, man. Yeah, yeah. The kids, uh, you know, they learn throttle control and uh, actually... Um, Papa Country was saying they get got lessons as they're 
starting out and i think that's key too um people come in they get lessons they get taught right so they're safe they learn the uh, proper riding techniques and we have rules that you have to wear proper um riding equipment you know certified helmets and boots and knee pads and things like that to help keep you safe uh, as with anything it, it can be dangerous but um there's a lot of precautions put into place to keep it safe and fun Okay, now while everything's shutting down and there is no competition for kids right now, we've we've kind of established here it's a it's a good outing. Uh, but you know, Papa Country and I got talking. And I went, "Wow, this must be an expensive endeavor." Then we compared it to hockey, uh, where you've got <laughs> equipment, tournament. Uh, now you actually pay for ice fees up to a time where the uh, arenas were open. Uh, were it an option for your kid to play hockey, you're getting up at five a.m. And it's going to cost you the better part of five to six thousand dollars by the end of the year, no matter what you do. Yeah, exactly. Seems like it might be comparative in price. No, I think so too. I mean, getting the initial bike can be uh, the pricey part, but you have your value there. You can always sell the bike when you're done done riding. Um, and yeah, you get the equipment and you're good to go. It's only thirty five, forty dollars a day to come ride and compare that to other sports it's, it's it's very affordable it's definitely the cheapest motorsport i would say has papa country gotten uh, gotten onto one of these bikes yet you know i uh, did I, I did sit on uh big brother's bike it's a yamaha ttr 110 and honestly that thing kind of revving up it's a little bike i'm not gonna lie i i, I exceed the weight <laughs> capacity for it i'm pretty sure uh but it made me want to get a bike. Yeah. And then Mama Country stepped in. She said, uh, uh, "Honey, you know, if anything goes wrong, you're kind of the bread earner, so maybe stick the horses." So I'm right. gonna stick the horses. Okay. But uh, you hold but your to, horses. But let's see if I we will could, hold my horses. But let's see if we could get into this in theory. Like, uh, let's say that uh, Papa Country and I wanted to show up to the track and get an introduction to this. Is there something set up there, Davin, where we could uh, sample it and see if it was for us? Definitely. Yeah. We offer packages where people come, um, you obviously book ahead, but you show up and there'll be a full size motocross bike ready to go with equipment. This year we couldn't do uh, rental equipment just because of COVID and things were a little different, but traditionally we, uh, have bikes and equipment on site. Uh, we even have people come that have never ridden and do like a bachelor party, for example. Oh, wow, that's um, fun. Yeah. Events like that. Yeah. So it can be a lot of fun for, for new, uh, beginners. Almost every weekend I would say we have a new, new rider come out. And when a beginner comes out there, good mix. oh, what's that, bud? No, I was just going to say, like at uh, Motor Park, there's a pretty good mix of riders. Like there's a lot of young kids, and then you know, sometimes the parents are riding with their kids, which I'm sure the kids love. Mm -hmm. And then you got guys just, and girls just riding on their own. So a little something for everybody there. That's very cool. Definitely. That's really cool. Uh, so I like the notion that, okay, so now uh, we, we show up there. At, uh, at the motor, uh, uh, it's called Motor Park in Chatsworth, by the way, we're talking about. Uh, we show up there, we, we get geared up. By the end of the day, by the end of the weekend, are we able to ride pretty good and we're getting some enjoyment out of it, you figure? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the first, uh, first half an hour, hour, depending on your uh, coordination, is the tricky part, just getting used to letting the clutch out and uh, rolling on the throttle and getting started. But as soon as you get comfortable with that, it's just smooth sailing. You just ton of fun after that sounds like a good time and it sounds like man being outside is so crucial uh in the months that we have to 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 take advantage of it now here's the other side of it you learn to ride you get geared up and you could begin to travel the world doing this because some of the most amazing places in the world have uh these motorsport tracks and trails that you can take uh, part in so it's not even something you just learn to do here uh, uh, you know in your own community yeah, you can definitely go uh, all over. I mean, I've traveled. A lot of my friends and, and a lot of my life has been revolved around motocross. Even this past winter, I was in South Africa, and I was at a, an event there. Wow. Um, so it's pretty amazing where it can take you. That is really cool. Uh, I think I think it's beneficial, huh, Papa Country, to have somebody with this kind of experience uh, on a bike, uh, looking at your bike and keeping an eye on what's going on as you, uh, as you know, I, I would imagine you have to have the bikes in the shop for regular uh, repair and or tune-ups and stuff like that. Having somebody with this kind of experience must be helping out a huge amount uh, as you guys get into this, huh? Well, from our perspective, like these are our children. And we're putting them on, on machines that go fast. And so I, it's nice to have a guy like David in, in, in uh, the Motomax shop who we trust, who we know he has our kids' best interest. And yeah. I think the same is true for all of his customers. Um, 
so we feel really confident putting our little guys on these bikes because we know that they've come through his shop. Right. Yeah, that uh, that I can see that being a, a big help. Uh, well, let's find out more about uh, Motor Park in Chatsworth. Where can people reach out and uh, find out more? Uh, www.motorparkracing.com uh, is a website. Uh, I believe most of the information is on there. Um, and for information on the sh- that's for the track specifically. Um, and for the shop, www.motomech.ca as well. Information on there, my phone number, uh, email all the good stuff um well that's awesome in the right direction yeah Yeah, if you don't mind people just calling up and and uh, trying to find out more i think that's a a great way to to uh garner some interest there yeah and uh just just to be clear davin um all the like the gear is sold through your shop you work on all the bikes kind of two separate entities but that's where like davin the first day we met he set up a big brother with a, a helmet some pants a jersey boots so he sells used gear he sells new gear oh, fantastic. So he's kind of the first he's your first point of contact in my opinion once you get to motor park you go see davin at the motomec shop and, and he'll set you up wow oh, that's awesome yeah, i always say any anything related to motocross if you need it i can get it taken care of Nice. Okay. Well, you're the guy. Davin Gross. Uh, Moto Mech is the shop at Moto Park in Chatsworth. Uh, just a man, it's been great chatting with you. So uh, I recommend people reach out. Davin's a good guy. You can just tell. Super good guy. Yeah. Yep. He's obviously yep. made a difference in uh, your weekends. Um, and, you know, he just has that confidence that you know a parent needs instilled in them okay you know what we're going to learn how to do this right we're going to geared up properly and and you're in the right place to learn and i think that's so important and he doesn't try to upsell you which i really appreciate because not everybody knows about um you know mechanics yeah uh dirt bikes and so forth so i trust the guy and, and i think he's doing a great job all right well there you go uh moto park in chatsworth uh this is hello country don't forget to subscribe to the podcast go to hellocountry.ca all kinds of great stories as we span uh you know the uh non-urban areas around us and uh that goes into cottage country into the country and uh many other places outside suburbia and metropolis and there's a great life to be had there so we invite you to come with us Thank you so much. You got the boys there? What's going on? Well, the boys are here. They're actually reading books, if you can believe it, and they're kind of quiet, which is very unusual. All right. Well, I'll leave you to that piece, and we'll catch you next time here on Hello Country. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.